All right, so let's continue. So the next step is that we're gonna write our first script, which is gonna be the script which will control the bird. So I am going to select the bird game object, go down to click add component, and I'm gonna type the name bird. This is a quick way to both create and add a new script. So because there's nothing named bird in our assets or in the Unity component reference, we're going to create a new script and then click create and add. And this is a new C sharp script. That's now created a new script in the root level of our project. We can collapse the sprites folder for now and it is attached to the bird game object. We're next going to, I'm right clicking to create a new folder, which is gonna be called scripts. And I'm gonna drag my bird script in there. Okay, let's expand that and double click on the bird script to open it for editing in our script editor, Mono Develop. All right, so now, the first thing that we wanna do is to check if the player has tried to click to move the bird. Now the rules of the game are gonna be that if the player is dead, they cannot jump up off the ground and start flying again. So the first thing that we wanna make sure is that if the player is dead, we're gonna stop them from flapping. So we are going to add at the top of our script a private, boolean variable called is dead. We're going to use is dead in update to check if the player is dead or not. And is dead by default will be initialized to false. So when the game starts, the player is not dead, they're alive. Now, in the update function, we're going to check if is dead is equal to false. So if the player is dead, this code within these brackets will be ignored. If they're still alive, we are going to be allowed to check the next conditional, which is if input dot get mouse button down zero, which is for the left mouse button. So if the player has left clicked, then we're gonna do the code in this next nested set of brackets. Now, the code that we want to do is that we want to add some force to the rigid body 2D component that we attached to the player earlier. So in order to do that, we need a rigid body variable. So we're going to add another private rigid body 2D, and we're going to call it RB2D. Now, in order to use this variable, we need to have our script get a reference to it. So what we're gonna do is in start, we're going to say rb2d equals get component rigid body 2d. What this is gonna do is when the game starts or when this object becomes enabled, it's gonna check on the game object that this script is attached to if there's a component of the type rigid body 2d attached. If there is, it will store it in the RB2D variable so that we can do physics stuff with it as we continue. So now we have our rigid body 2D variable. And so if the player is not dead and if they've clicked the mouse button, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set RB2D dot velocity, the velocity of that rigid body to equal vector two dot zero. So what this means is our rigid body 2D is always going to be either rising because the player has flapped or falling because the player hasn't flapped and they're being affected by gravity. Now the result of that will be that every time we jump we'll get slightly different behavior because we'll have to either equal out the downward motion that's already there or we'll be adding to the upward motion that's already happening. And that's gonna give us a sort of inconsistent behavior. So for games where you're going for a sort of more accurate simulation feeling, like let's say maybe a, a, a pool or billiards game or some other game where sort of physics were integral to the gameplay, uh, you wouldn't wanna do this type of thing. But for this, we're looking for like a sort of cartoony, 
almost Super Mario Brothers type of physics where every time we push the jump button, we're going to get the exact same response. And that's actually really important to the gameplay here. So what we're going to do is every time the player jumps, we're going to reset the velocity to zero so that the next thing that we do will always be the same. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some force to the rigid body 2D by using rb2d.addForce. And we are going to need a amount of force to add. So we're going to add a public variable which is going to be of the type float and that's going to be called up force and we're going to initialize that to 200. Now we're going to use up force to create a new vector 2 to pass to RB2D. So a vector 2 is going to store two floating point values which correspond to the X and the Y axes. So in this case for the X axis, the horizontal axis, we're going to set it to zero. We don't want to change the player's horizontal movement because remember the player is not actually moving horizontally. The world is going to be the thing moving horizontally. The player is just jumping up and down in place as the obstacles move around him. So we're going to set the X for, we're going to add zero units of force along the X axis and we're going to add up force along the Y axis. So now we can save this script. Just hit OK to this warning about the line the line endings. This is just a file formatting issue. It doesn't affect the gameplay. I'm just going to hit OK. And we can return to Unity to test our flapping behavior. So if we play the scene and click, we can see that we can now jump up and down in place. We can jump as many times as we want or we can flap as many times as we want and we can fall to the ground. But in this case, we have nothing to tell us to stop flapping because we have nothing setting is dead to true when we hit the ground. So that's the next thing that we're going to add. So I'm going to exit play mode and switch back to monitor develop. And so we need to check if the player has hit the ground or any other obstacle for that matter, like the columns that we're going to have. So we're going to do that using a function called on collision enter 2D. So we're going to type void on collision enter 2D. Make sure that the capitalization is exactly the same as I've typed it. This is a function from Unity's API. So Unity will always be listening for this function. And if a game object that has this script attached to it registers a collision with something else, it will call this function and do the code inside it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say is dead equals true. So now once is dead becomes true in update, we'll no longer be able to flap because this check will fail or evaluate to false. So let's save our script again return back to Unity, and test. So now I'm just going to allow the bird to fall to the ground. And now no matter how much I click to try to flap, I cannot get off the ground because I am dead. So that's almost everything that we need for our bird. The only other thing that we're going to need are some functions or some lines of code which are going to allow us to play the animations. So switch to our wing flapping and our dead animation states as, along with an animation controller uh, to control the transitions between those states. And we're going to move to that in the next topic. First, I'm going to take a look at the chat and see how everybody's doing. Somebody's asking if I change the rigid body settings, the correct the chat is correct in saying no, I didn't. I'm using the default settings. And yes, yeah, somebody else talking about the bird. The bird is not actually going to move. The bird is just going to move up and down, and the world is going to scroll to the right or to the left uh, while the bird stays in place. So it looks like the bird is moving, even though they're not. 
Uh, somebody asks, could you also write rb2d dot velocity equals new vector two zero zero? You sure could, but there's no real reason to. Yes, vector two dot zero is just a shortcut for zero zero. Okay, great. Somebody's asking, why not use a coroutine? The main reason for not using a coroutine is that it requires more management. The coroutine needs to be started and stopped, which requires extra lines of code that you may not need. And also, as somebody else says, the coroutines are prone to allocating memory, uh, which can lead to garbage collection and therefore loss of performance at runtime. So generally speaking, unless you really need a coroutine or unless it's just something to run once, like fading in the scene or doing something like that, I recommend avoiding them during your repetitive gameplay code. 